Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Code Rex. So, we have been working on this tic-tac-toe game since the last video. And in the last video, we went through on how to create the user interface. And now we are going to continue adding the functionalities of the game into the project. So now, we are going to start by creating some variables that we are going to be needing in adding our functionalities. And the first one is the player. This is going to help us keep track of the next player who is to play the game. And we have the winner and this is to keep track of who win the game so we can record the score in the score label and we have the possible choices so this is actually going to help us with our single player and our multiplayer mode to ensure that to ensure that you won't be able to click about it two eyes yeah so this is just like keeping track of the position of the buttons because we have nine buttons there yeah we have nine buttons there, so we want to make sure that we know which button is active and which button is not active. And you can help us to keep track of our winners. So, and we have tongue counter, and this tongue counter is just a way of knowing who is the next person to play the game, actually. Okay, so and we have something like living loop. Actually, I'm not sure if this is going to be useful, but let's see have it on now. So, these are the five variables we are going to have now. So after now, we are going to have a function that whenever we click the button, we are going to want it to like display on the screen. We want it to display either X or O on the screen based on the player that is about to play, like the turn of the player. So, actually, yeah, we're going to have that. Let's have it here. So, this is the game for now. And now we want to have this function that whenever we click on this button, we want the next player to like be the one that it will appear. And if the next player wants to be X, we want X to be appear. And if the next player wants to be O, we want O to appear on the screen. So follow along as we do this. So we're actually going to call this function button click. Uh, that just but they have VTN click. So I want to have this inside just to specify the type of button, like the button, the specific button that is clicked. So we know how to modify it. So, so we have to define some global variables here, which we are having from the previous variable we defined, and we have to have tongue counter too. We want to have possible choices. That's very very important. So now, what we want to do, we want to check the tongue counter. So, we want to say if the tongue counter is actually, we want to check the remainder of the tongue counter, and if the remainder is not equal to zero, which means the remainder is an odd number, right? Yeah, it's not equal to zero because if it's an even number, it's going to be equal to zero. If it's not equal to zero, we want the player to be equal to O, which means it's the opponent or the computer that is playing. So, but else we want our player to be equal to X, right? So, this R is going to be so. One other thing we want to do here is if player equal to O. What do we want to do? Okay, we want to configure the button in a way that the button will display whole, right? So we are going to just have button dot configure. Okay, button dot configure. I want the text to be what equal to whole. So now I want the button to be like the text to be equal to one health, which means button is equal to hex, right? So else we want our button dot configure. Yeah, we want it to be sorry about that. Configure. We want the text to be equal to hex. So yes, we want to have it this way. So now what's the next thing we are going to do here? And the next thing we are going to do here is now is like okay, we want to remove the button that is pressed from our possible choices. So if you press the first button, we want to remove this first button from our possible choices because this possible choices is the one helping the computer to make its decision. So it can know the spot that is it is stiff that is stiff free in order for it to like pick a spot to play next. So so what do you want to do here now? We want to know if button is actually equal to button one. And if button is actually equal to button one, we want to see possible choices dot remove. We want to remove one from there. So I'm just going to have these. Okay, let's just duplicate this. So elif, 
So if button i is equal to button 2, I want to have this to be equal to 2. I want to remove 2, right? So let's duplicate this like, say, 7 more times, okay? So let's sort this out first. So I want to have this to be 3. This to be 4. Okay. So next one is 5 now. And let's have this to be 5. Then 6. Okay. 7. Eight. So let's have one more here. So now we have one more, right? Okay. So now let's make this to be nine. So now we've make it in a way that we want to configure all these buttons. Then we want to remove this specific button from the choices. So what next we want to do now? We want to like disable that button so our player won't be able to press a button that he has pressed before or the, that the computer have played on before. So let's configure the button and make sure the button is disabled then. So let's just have the state equals to disable. Yep. So this way, and now let's have an increment of our tongue counter. Let's increase the tongue counter by one. Okay, plus equal one, right? So now, this is going to be. So now, we want to add this command to this buttons right so so we can actually see the action whenever we click the button so let's put it this way so let's have command and want to have okay let's have on the bar okay btn click want to have button Okay, so let's now modify this menu one to the specific button. This is button two, button three, button four, button five, button six, button seven, button eight, button nine. So let's check this out and see. So this is it. You can see a different rate now. We are having different things. And once you've clicked the button, you can't click it again. Can you see that? Or I haven't turned the functionalities of the end game. Okay, let's check the end button here, and we should have a command here. And the command should be equal to system dot exit. So let's try this again. So you can see, next time I'm clicking, it's going to be X. This time it's going to be O. Next time X O. So we can just edit this game like that. So. What's next thing we are going to do now? We want to have the functionality so that our computer can play this game also. And how do we intend to do that? So it's definitely just defining another function. We can make it above or below this. So let's just have it here dev computer play. So now we want to have a dev computer play here, and we have no argument for this. So let's just have some global variables to and we have tongue counter living loop and possible choices right so so now we want to check this same thing we went through here and let's just make it this way let's just copy this and okay paste it here i won't be needing everything actually just the first one so we want to have our computer make a choice now and now you will see the reason why we are removing every choice the player has chosen from the possible choices and now we want to make have the computer make a random choice here, I want to store it as norm, or let's just okay, let's give it as choice to make it more okay. So now I want to have it as choice, I want to make it pick it from the possible choices. So anytime a player has picked from the possible choices, it won't be available here. So the computer won't be able to pick same number again. So this is the main reason why we are having that list possible choices. So I want to have possible choices now, dot remove choice so whenever the computer has picked a choice from the possible choices we want to remove that specific number from the choice 
So now, what we want to do next, we want to check for the choice the computer has picked. And when we check for this choice now, if choice equals to 1, we want to modify the button 1, like the first button, right? I want the text to be, so I'm not using configure this time around, I'm using this text. Just want to show you that there are different ways you can modify an element in TK Winter. So, and after that, we want the state to be disabled automatically. So we just add that button, okay? Do okay? We want to have the state here because disabled. Okay, let's have it here. So, so whenever a computer has picked the first button, you want to disable that first button. So let's just copy this and have hell if. So now, if it's two. We want to have button two and okay. So let me copy this and paste it numbers of time. Okay, let's have okay. It's a button. Sorry, it's kind of mistakenly copied an empty space. So let's paste this. This for three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. So let's remove this to over here. So this button two fixed. So now let's fix button three actually. So we have button three here. Okay. Then we have button four here. And we have button five here. We have button six here. Okay, then we have button seven here, right? Then button eight here. So, and the last but not the least. So button now here, right? So this is how it's going to be. So whenever your computer has picked a choice, we we'll just want to like have that choice like removed. The button, the choice removed from the list, from the possible choices, then we want to set the text on the button to zero, to O, letter O. And after that, we want the state to be disabled. So now what's the next thing we do, okay? I will just want to have else this. Mm, yeah, I think we are good with this. Uh, in every time, yeah, okay. I agree with this, I agree with this. So let's just increment the thumb counter, okay. Let's have an increment here, plus H or one. So, is that it's going to be. And the first thing we are going to have here is we want the computer to pick its choice first. So let's just have computer play, right. So we want to just have computer play, right. So when we run this game here now, we should have the computer picking its choice first. And we can see the computer pick its choice first. So now I can see that I'm playing and computer is not picking. So what I really need to do here is just go into my button click and after this, the end, at the end of this function, I still want to call that same function computer play. So if I should run this game now, I could probably be playing against the computer. So you can see how this game is now. So thank you very much for coming this far with us today. So we are going to be handing up these projects on the next video. And we are going to be tracking the progress here. And you're going to be able to restart the game. Then select if it's whether you're playing with multiplayer or a single player mode. And this multiplayer is actually where you could just play it against your friend on the same PC, actually. Yeah. Against your friend, or just like, yes, instead of playing against the computer, you could just play it against your friend. So this is all for today. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Code Utrex, and like this video. And don't forget to smash the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to receive a notification from more sent timers and updates here on YouTube. Thank you very much. See you next time.